Morning and welcome to a Cybex demonstration video. This video is based on the latest release of the all-wheel drive Cybex uh, controller firmware and that is version 1.21. Most of the units that would have got shipped uh, have probably got 1.15. I don't know if many people have been updating the units. Uh, we constantly look to improve our software and hardware control uh, based on customers' requirements and needs and this firmware is, does exactly that. So 1.21, what has changed uh, over the releases? You can actually see that if you head to our forum and actually go to the firmware releases section, so in the board index, and then go down to the product that you've got. If you click on that and then go firmware releases, all of the updates that are actually talked about and what's been included. But I'm actually gonna just go over some of those now and, uh, and explain those. Now, if you have got, say, a 1.15 version of firmware, and you've updated then to 1.21, the, the changes aren't going to affect anything in the terms of your control. Uh, there's nothing that's going to change in, in, in terms of it's going to change the duty cycle and whatnot. What is going to change is just new features have added. So let's talk about those. So the first one that was probably noticeable is that you've now got output testing. The output testing is quite useful because what it allows you to do if you're fault finding a, a problem or something like that, you can basically enable the output test mode that then basically turns off all of the logic of the all-wheel drive controller. Uh, you might get an error on the dash about the CAN bus because we um, probably most likely we stop transmitting the CAN bus about the uh, frequency information and the duty cycle of what the OEM controller would normally be sending. And then what you can do is you can set your output test mode, so low side, half side, half bridge, uh, set a frequency and a test duty cycle. So it's quite useful to be able to do some testing now. Next, what's changed is you've also got the uh, ability now that the on board, it's got can logging. So a new version of software uh, will be coming onto our website soon, which is called Cybex Can Logger. You can actually see it just here. And what this allows you to do is be able to connect to the all-wheel drive unit direct and, uh, and log the CAN bus data that is actually happening on the CAN bus of the OEM car. The frames from the all-wheel drive controller are not picked up, just the frames that are being transmitted on the rest of the bus. It's quite useful for fault finding. Uh, it's also useful if you want to add some features and you want to tell us about it, you can basically stop it and then export it to a log and email us the log file so we can look at that. So coming back to the SCAL software in terms of what would be useful for dealers and some end users, you've now got the ability to lock the maps. So you can basically go to Cal and then edit property flag and locked, and you can lock a map down to basically meaning you can't edit it. Uh, that's one thing that's quite useful for dealers. They want to lock something down to stop end users from doing any changes when they connect to it live. You can also add a restriction flag on that, which again is quite useful for the dealer side of things. Now, the other thing that's really useful is for big power cars. So some of you may have driven a or drive car that's got a huge amount of power. Generally, what happens is that the rear of the, the car and say like the R35 is biased quite a lot to the rear. And one of our dealers basically pointed out that on shifting, he would find that it would spin up the rear tire a lot on high power cars and asked if there was something we could do about that. What we've actually added is something called a post shift time multiplier. So you can actually open up a gauge for that. So it's going to go to post shift time and put it as a trace, 50 hertz. Then we can make this resizable. It's quite useful to be able to see exactly what's going on. And then we can add some more items to this. So I'm actually going to add the all-wheel drive final, which is the final duty that's being sent out. And then also then going to add the multiplier for this so you can see exactly what it's doing. We'll just change the color of that last item just so it's a bit more obvious what's happening. So at the moment, the uh, I'm just simulating the, the, the vehicle driving along. It's in second gear. You can open up a gear get a gauge here. Now what you'll find now is when you watch this post shift time here at zero, when I actually make it change gear, you'll see that timer counts down. Now the start of that number is taken from the breakpoint value of the post shift timer. So basically the highest value that's here this number here, the 750, that will be the start of the timer. Okay, if you change that to 1000 or 2000, that will be the start of that timer then. So at the moment, it starts at 750. And you can then see if I just pause this by pressing spacebar, you can see the timer decays down. And at the moment, the multiplier is not doing anything at all to that. 
Now there is a post shift multiplier enable throttle position, which basically means that you probably don't want this applying a multiplier at low uh, throttle loads, etc. You only want it probably at maximum uh, torque. So you're going to do that based on a throttle position. So if we come back to this now, so my throttle position is actually greater than 20%, as we can see. And then I'm going to just basically just put in this multiplier table some just random values, just put it to like 0.5 there. And then we can just blend it in, etc. Or you can make it higher. We could always up it here, put it to two, for example. Now, when I change gear now, what you'll see is the multiplier kick in and apply. So you'll see here now, if I just pause that, you can see here the multiplier, the blue value dropped down, causing the all-wheel drive final to drop down. And then as the multiplier went up to two, you can see the multiplier went up. It's really useful. On a shift in a high-powered car, you can now push some power to the front initially uh, to help stabilize the car. It keeps the car straight. Four-wheel drive cars or all-wheel drive cars are generally steered, obviously, uh, from the torque in the front. So if you can get the balance between the front and the rear axles, uh, it enables the car to be a lot more stable. So that's a really useful feature. We've also added a manifold pressure multiplier now for some of the cars that have got manifold pressure being uh, sent out onto the OEM CAN bus, uh, CAN bus like the R35, RS3, 991. Cars like the Hurricane and uh, an R8 don't have that because from the factory they come as normal aspirated. Uh, but we could obviously add some custom firmware if some dealers are wanting to send out CAN data to it. And you've obviously got the ability to send out any custom CAN data you want already in the transmit section. So it's quite useful that you can use that now uh, to do send data uh, to your engine ECU for logging your final duties, your currents, etc. OK, well, I hope you're enjoying your all-wheel drive unit. This firmware, I'm no doubt going to make it better. And um, any further improvements you'd like to see, please contact our support team and we'd be more than happy to deal with your request. If you like this content, please subscribe and hit the like button below.